All right. So I'm just going to go over some of the assignments submissions from the head construction and figure painting week. Uh, I'll just give my two cents on some of the people that I have here. Uh, I realize that not everyone that I'm reviewing will always be in here, but I'm recording this anyway, so you'll always be able to review it later. And for anyone that's not being reviewed, you can still, you know, pull some information out of this. And it's definitely uh, an incentive for you to submit your artwork to the Discord. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with Taryn. I don't think he's in here, but that's okay. So Taryn, the, the thing that I primarily see with your artwork right now is a bit of a perspective issue. So if we look at the placement of the eyes, right? It's kind of, it's not following any conversion line because if I were to guess where your horizon line is, I would say it's around here, right? And your, <clears throat> your eyes are really going crooked way up. Same for the placement of your hairline, for instance, and your ears. So everything's pointing away from the horizon line while we have somewhat of a neutral position for everything else of the facial features. So that's something that you should definitely be aware of. Um, and so what I'd suggest is fixing that. We'll use the trusty old liquify for this one. So also the placement of the ear, it kind of feels a little bit off. Do a bit of a transform here. Right. <clears throat> so that makes the face feel a little bit more natural already. Have the eye line follow the perspective a little bit better. In terms of the, the rendering of the skin, this all looks pretty, really nice actually, what you've done here. Um, I think primarily, and let's just fill in the background so we can get rid of those liquify lines. So all in all, it looks pretty good. Um, I'd say the only thing is, and I think, and purple has the same issue when it came to lighting. So the thing that you're not doing, Taryn, um, enough yet is just pushing your darks. Uh, it all feels very much in those half tone area um, where in order to create some sort of a more depth to the character, you can definitely push the darks a little bit more.
And similarly to that, so not only pushing the darks more, you can definitely push the lights more as well, because in this stage, it kind of feels, it kind of feels hard to tell where your light source is coming from. Now, this could be intentional, like if you're just going for that ambient light look, um, sure, that could work. Um, though I don't feel like that's what you were going for uh, in this one. So um, I feel like your light source is coming predominantly from the right in this instance. So you can definitely push that a little bit more if you wanted to. just to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more dimension. Now again, this will depend on your reference, right? If you have a good reference for this, it'll be easier to follow those highlights. If you're making this up out of your head, then it kind of becomes harder to know where to push those highlights. But you definitely need highlights to create more depth into your image. Also to give your flesh stones a little bit more life, you could have, because the, the, the ear on the other side of the face is, it's gonna catch uh, most of that light because it's in the area of the key light. So it's also having some of that translucent nature. Um, and so that translucency, you can have, you can exaggerate that a little bit. You don't have to, but you can definitely push it a little bit to make that flesh stone shine through, right? Um, now this kind of depends on what type of skin tone you're going for, but I feel like with this one, you're definitely going for a more natural feeling in the skin. Um, and it's something that, of course, in a normal portrait, you wouldn't see the ear in this position, right? Be but because you have these elvish ears, <clears throat> they would definitely um, shine through. But other than that, really, really nice job on the on the paint, man. It's really, really cool portrait. I'd say the the main thing, um, you know, that would already push this a lot further would be the um, the perspective and the structure issues themselves, uh, not necessarily the paint, uh, but. Uh, pushing the darks and the lights would definitely elevate this piece a lot more. Also in your hair, um, it's still two. It's just one, the value of the hair overall, if we look at it, it really doesn't change that much, right? You have some subtle shadow mapping going on here, uh, but a lot of that hair would just fall completely into shadow because of the nature of your lighting. So um, you can definitely push that more as well. All right, so that's it for Charon. Then moving on. We have TW. I'm not sure if you're in here. Not yet, okay. So TW, I, I really like this. Um, it's a, a little bit more stylized. <clears throat> Again, the thing I'd say for you is just primarily 
focusing uh, a little bit more on getting the proportions right uh, before exaggerating anything too much um, or inventing too many things. Um, like I like what you're doing with the the hair, but again, hair just isn't, isn't like what a lot of us tend to do is just, you know, uh, in the beginning, just have these random strokes. Try to give your hair some type of a, I would say shape again, just a, a one one big shape that can definitely just help you identify its, its overall structure. And then you can break up that shape with more ribbons or you know hair strands or or things like that but the, like the the main shape should read first and foremost uh, and again don't make this up from imagination just look at reference right um and then from that you can you can stylize it if you want to So looking at the eyes as well, if you wanted to, like, they they feel a little bit too over the place. Like I feel if you would have just followed the the structure of the simple Loomis head, not even the rally rhythms, but just the Loomis head, the placement of those eyes would have been a little bit better. Um, I I do like their their form. They read pretty well, especially the, the left eye. That's really nice. Uh, the right eye kind of feels a little bit off. And again, you're, you're making it you're making it difficult for yourself, especially in the beginning. Like I think it would have been better to just first do this in grayscale instead of uh, doing it in a, like a, a reddish color like this because the reddish color will it will require you to have a good knowledge of the values of painting or painting a face um, because there's subtle shifts and hues that you can pick up on and, and make this you know look more believable but it's it's very hard to do with a certain hue that isn't natural to a flesh color right so there, there there is some red in our flesh but it's definitely not this pinkish red so if you want to make like a pinkish skin like character you do need quite a bit of confidence in your values uh before being able to do that By the way, guys, if you have any questions while I'm reviewing these, feel free to ask him. So I really like the design of what you've got going on here, TW. That's really nice. But again, like my what, what, you know, my motto in life, it just needs a little bit more structure. Um, so simplify it first before really going into design. And I know that's hard in the beginning. Um, you want to like really have that sketchy, loose, designerly stuff that everyone loves. But I feel it it should be informed with you know, structure before doing anything else. So if you, if when you're learning this, even for the design assignments, 
if it comes out a little bit more generic, but it has good structure, I feel that's more important. And just a tip when it comes to creating feminine faces is that having them have a little bit of a shorter nose instead of a long nose already makes them look a little bit more feminine um, as opposed to having them have a longer nose. Um, it's really hard to pull off, uh, especially in the beginning, Give him, giving them a longer or even a bigger nose because there's definitely a lot of women that have bigger noses and still look very feminine, but it's uh, a very tricky thing to get right and it does usually need like require some form of reference or also this feels like just when it comes to structure and this is like what I'm talking about just this the the ponytail that you have like the only way to have a ponytail like that is if you pull your hair back but most of your hair is rounded like this so you should have some indication of that hair being pulled together on one side and then you can have these two ribbons or whatever that's called you know, off to the side but you should think about your uh, your designs when when especially when it comes to hair because there's so many variations in hair it's ridiculous um so just you know pulling off some good reference can definitely help But good job overall, man. Uh, I like it. All right. Uh, next in line.